Uh, what I thought I'd do is focus on four elements of my art, my visual art, which bleeds over to my other art. I make documentaries, write plays, uh, I have a lifelong interest in writing songs, produced many songs. So I, I spread my art in different ways, and as a result, in each of the mediums, they're not as expert or as proficient as they would be if I spent more time in each medium. So they're kind of like you should probably see in this visual art. They have primary colors. There's not really that much time spent on them. But what I do instead is I spend time on the idea that triggers it. And I use ideas as a way to connect with people. That's really the most important thing in my life is to connect the connect connection with people and I feel I get a lot of personal growth through that and I'm unsatisfied to do say representational art in a way that uh, achieves the objective uh, in that booklet for example you'll see some paintings of my mother's that was beautiful representation representational art very very expert done. I'm more interested in the particular idea that triggered it and the memory that it caused. So here's an example. So on this flyer, I named the four things I'd like to talk about. One is people. The second is perspective, uh, perceptive, uh, prolific, and peaceful and kind. And my visual art has been helping me in these four areas. And I find that, for example, in this piece here, this is a piece that my daughter Kelly, who's here, uh, and I started when she, she's 39 now, when she was five years old, we laid on the living room floor, we had a piece of cardboard and markers or colored pencils, and we drew this. And then we put it, we colored it in, we put it on, on the wall or near the wall, and then a month or two later, it moved to the outside shed. And then I thought maybe it was thrown out. I looked for it, didn't find it. And then 30 years later, a couple of years ago, I found it outside, I had it imaged onto a canvas, this is, not, this is just a print of the canvas, you know. And so this is uh, what we did together and memorialized an artistic thing that we were doing. Kelly, you're videoing me? Maybe you can go in the back to do I that. got it good. No, it's too close. Please. I'm zoomed out all the way. Okay. All right. It would be better if you go in the back, please, believe me. Um, so what... Uh, it might look like a, an image of a face, a profile of a face, but to me it was joyous, with, filled with colors and interesting designs. And it was a way in which to capture a bit of a relationship that we had in that moment, on that floor, in that living room, back then. And I like to revisit it. This, by the way, this piece was in the uh, AARP, a national exhibit, they made a video of it, and then they uh, asked me to do a 30 second or one minute description, as well as uh, uh, 30 other artists. And that, that video went nationwide and they got a tremendous response to it, as did from the other artists. So I got to be included among these other artists 
and then an okay. the And uh, the name of it was uh, Forever Young. So that, that was that piece. This piece, and I have several of these I'd like to move through, and on these themes of people. So this connects with my daughter. It also connects me with other people who are parents of people, <laughs> of children. And, um, and also who like vibrancy and colors and stuff. This piece, uh, when I transitioned 12 years ago to female, I find that what I needed to do was express myself about that. So I started doing stand-up comedy. I was doing comedy two, three days a week all over New York City and in Westchester County too. And that helped me get out that I was transgender. This also helped me get it out, visual art. So this is a, a simple flower, a carnation, if you will. It's called trans, transcarnation. It has the trans colors of pink, blue, and white. And on one side of the stem are mostly females in pink. And on this side, excuse me, pass it front of are mostly blue or males. And then there's a bit of uh, accidentals that are in here. You know, some males go over to female, females to male and stuff. And that's sort of like moving in trance. But the whole idea was I think it's I think it's vibrant, I think it's joyous. Is it joyous? <laughs> okay. So uh, and I like and I get a great reaction about it because of that. This is the opposite of joyous. This is, uh, excuse my back when I do this, but this piece is, um, this piece is about an event that happened that was basically triggered because I looked female or androgynous 30 something years ago when I owned the store. And in that store, saw baby furniture and toys and stuff. A man came in with a bat, and I didn't come in with a bat. He came in with an intention to maybe do harm to me. And then, as I was helping him pick out a gift for his nephew, I went to the boxes of bats that were near the front of my store, and I said, well, why don't you get, uh, instead of those expensive electronic toys, why don't you get a 12, uh, a bat for a 12 year old, a wooden bat, inexpensive. And I went to reach down into the one with the lower bats, and as I was coming up out of the box and up to him, he, he had already had reached in to got the larger wooden bat, I mean, uh, aluminum bat, and he came down like that on my head and fractured my head in 14 places. I nearly died. It was really a miracle to live through it. I had some serious brain damage. Maybe it's why I, who I am today is as a result of some of the damage that was caused that, that day. But it, um, it led to a silver lining, which we don't have much time today to talk, talk about, but basically I took an event that would have derailed me if I didn't look at it positively for many, many years because I used to have a photographic memory I no longer had. I couldn't smell for seven seven years, so as a result, I got very, very thin at that time. I had a number of other issues that came up. I was also a bit afraid of things. But I'll tell the story just really quickly. It led me to be different than I am and avenge myself, because I got started getting that feedback from other people. And I planned to kill the man, to find him and then kill him. I used to go out at night with a steak knife under the seat of my car. And I went to drug rehab centers where I thought he was. Because I was in denial that he did it because I looked different, that I was androgynous. I had long blonde hair at the time. I was very, I was thin. I looked like a female. People used to say, miss. And then I would say, no, not a female. And so he thought that's who I was. And for some reason that irritated him, maybe, and also this was 30 years ago, but it was a hate crime at the time, and I was the victim of a hate crime. So uh, what was the issue was that when I tried to kill him, I was in denial 
that I, he didn't like me because I was female inside my head. And I didn't accept that. And so I made up a reason that he must have been on drugs. And therefore, I went to these drug rehab centers and I was going to kill anybody. I was going to find him and literally kill him. And through a sort of a miraculous thing that happened in a car, me praying, and then getting a, a rush of energy through the windshield, propelling my head back against the headrest, I saw that that was not, that things would be all right, and all of that anxiety and hatred possibly avenging him came out of me like a volcano, and in it came forgiveness, and I, I'm probably one of the most forgiving people you'll ever meet. I became very, very forgiving and uh, okay with things, you know, really okay with it. So anyway, so that, that was an event that happened, and revisiting that event, when I revisit it, I don't revisit it. And by the way, when I was on the ground, when I was on the floor, he hit me, they said in the hospital, that he hit me twice more. So he, he really was out to kill me. So, um, but I looked at this silver lining part of it. And as a result, uh, I've done this, uh, a presentation similar to this with, uh, there's a group called Crime Victims Assistance, part of Westchester Community Op uh, Opportunities Board, and uh, they help people who are crime victims. They helped me 30 some odd years ago. And, uh, and I've done a presentation. I also went to uh, the Westchester County Jail with this piece and talked to them there, because they're often people who commit crimes, often have crimes committed against them. I spoke to them about that. It was really amazing. I've done it both on Zoom and then in person. Let me get some of these other pieces, but the point I'm trying to make is, in for me in art, it's to memorialize an event or a feeling. How are we for time, Rosa? You only use oh, okay. 11 minutes. You have actually a lot more time. We went until 2.20, and it's 2.05. We have 15 minutes. Okay, good. You used 11 minutes. All right, good. This is my, uh, it's dangerous to say, but... <laughs> this is my favorite piece. Dangerous to say. This is called Transition. It talks about or it give, gives me the opportunity to tell people about and then for them to share with me. One transition was from, which maybe is a little more obvious, this is a door, a curved door, going from male to female on the other side of the door. And then the female getting more the accentuated. That was one, tra main, mainly one transition. Another transition that's significant in my life and still unresolved is I'm very split. Left brain, very sequential analytical thinking, and many people are like this, and right brain, creative, lateral thinking, future-based, present-based. And that dichotomy uh, I plan to eventually write a book about this topic, left brain, right brain, and I call it, and the soul, is getting to a blend of the left brain and right brain is where unusual, wonderful things ha can happen in life. And they don't happen when you're separated. So some people live their life, they think they're a mathematician, and they become a math teacher or an engineer or something, but they're not really, they're really more of an artist and they should be doing something, but yet they spend their time in that profession doing that thing. And it leads to often alcoholism, drug addiction, unhappiness. And then likewise on the other side, people who think that they're wonderful artists and creative, maybe they would be better off being an accountant, you know? And that dislocation can be significant. And also, I think it's directly tied to being trans transgender, especially for, little, for younger children, and I'm planning to help people with that. I know many, hundreds and hundreds of men who transition to female, primarily because of this issue. Anyway, so that was one transition from male to female. Another transition that I made at the same time was deciding that I wanted to spend more time on the right side of my brain, the creative side, and it was going from this 
boxy, sequential, analytical thinking, world going upside down, to get more spiritual and more passionate. And all of that came out of this ooze or confusion that I was going through. So I went through these two major transitions at one time and lived through it. So, so this is this piece is called transition. Uh, this other piece is right over that I was going to show is right over here on this wall, like it's directly right here. This is called the love tree. And I often find that I try to see meaning in things around me. And when I do see that meaning, we see it all, we see it all, we see it every day, and we say, wow, it's amazing with this. And so what I try to do is I try to either write it down or do a painting about it. One painting I have coming up is, I mentioned this to a couple of painters the other day, is imagine like this is the corner. This is a white wall and a white wall heater. And I'm on the corner. Kelly, you getting this? Yes. I'm in the corner of these walls. And I'm painting trans colors, which are like pink, blue, and white, or LGBT colors, they're like seven or eight colors. And I'm painting these images. And then behind me at this wall here, it's blown out, and there's this sun and a sky and a green pasture like that. It's behind me and it's really the object of the painting is realizing that I painted myself into a corner. When I was living my life as a female, I was so enraptured by it as a my shoulder and I see that there's a world beyond what I'm focused on here. So that's what I'm talking about, about taking something in your life and then painting about it. In this case here, what happened is that this tree, if you can imagine, is like four or five times bigger than this, but it was dying. So because it was dying, I thought, well, maybe I could save it if we trim off the dead limbs. So I had my gardener trim off the dead limbs, and all the limbs were on the ground. And he says to me, okay, what should I do? Pulverize them? Throw them over the, the fence? What do you want me to do with these? So I said, no, I'll leave them there for a couple of days. I want to think about what I want to do. And it, I mean, it may not look artistic to, to you all, but it was artistic to me. All I did was I painted them white and black and put some Native American styling on them. I lean them up against the tree. All of a sudden, I just got this tremendous, I'm on the main road, I'm on Mill Road in Rochelle. I was getting a huge response from people who said, well, you know Fran or Frank, whatever. Ask him or her, whatever, what, what, what it is. You know, people were sending me emails and stuff. And so, uh, the, when, the day I did it, when I did it, I realized what I was doing is that I I got it. Just continue. Yeah, please try uh, to continue. Take the. All right. So what was um, what was happening was that the tree is really sacred, and I was paying this homage to the tree, hoping that what by doing that it would make it live longer. It was like a crazy idea, but as I did it. As I put them up there, I made a Facebook post and I posted it up and I made up a story and I said that the art, uh, the artist will get a lot of luck at it as a result and the nature next door will become a bullion. And just as I said that and posted it up, there's a tree at the Greek church property next to me and as I did that, about 200 birds started singing out of that tree. And I felt, wow, that, so I was so remarked by it, I went into my house, I put the words, the luck tree, into Google, and up came the Cherokee believing that wood is sacred and that it will cause the dead to be more alive. And, that, and, and I believe in communicating with the dead, you know, I mean, 
uh, I feel the presence of my parents all the time and stuff. So anyway, so that had, so it had like good fortune and then P.S. it started a period of about three years of extremely phenomenal luck. It may have been self-induced or whatever, but uh, so, so the message I'm, I'm having here, we have about five minutes left. Yeah, okay, is to, is to just like go with whatever the, the present day is, is giving you or the big event that happens in your life and try to memorialize it. So this, um, this, um, I started getting involved in DEI, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, because when I looked at my own life, I felt like I wasn't as accepting as I should have been. I grew up in a very stringent Italian-American community, family, and neighborhood who wasn't as accepting of marginalized people or black people, Hispanics, and stuff like that. So as I got more involved in that, I started doing more painting about it. That's how I like to communicate. I've written several plays on that topic and stuff. So this is one that I wanted to show the prospect of what could happen in the future if we don't really recognize or be more have more humanity toward each other. So this person was a combination of female and male and has all the races on their face has partly a smile and part not, and was being impacted, like maybe global warming or climate change, things happening, things coming from the sky, soldiers coming on the horizon, and yet is deciding to jump this fence and has a hopefulness about getting to the other side. It's more a tale of warning about what's, what's maybe on the horizon, and that we need to be mindful of that. Um, this is a simple piece on, this is my, basically my living room, and this is a, my piano, and it, it's just the joy of having some quiet time and the influence of music, and, and yet, I couldn't leave it like that. I had to twist the perspective and make it so that it didn't make, uh, didn't make sense. Like this should be going out like that. So it's also taking what you have and then altering it to make it a little more interesting. Uh, this is, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show this piece and then one more. This is something, Kelly, I think you had to- It's not a great print, but yeah. It's this not a great print, but yeah. my daughter, Mary Kelly. The green this shouldn't is, uh, be there, but. She and I, when she was like a couple years old, and then she and I a year ago, and her expression- Even through change, show that, life that you have every reason to smile. Even? Through change, show life that you have every reason to smile. It's not just Fran's change, but it's my change from growth, too. So you see the change in me, too. Right. Okay? And so it's like sharing art with other people. Oh, it's and do that, do that pretty with a great one. The one, the sculpture. I mean, the sculpture, outside sculpture. Yeah. So I had some of this. I had three different sculpture pieces out here. One was on trip. I love that picture. One was a uh, dedication to my daughter, Kelly, who's green. And then this one... This one was here too, this was outside. But that's um, at our house though. This is called uh, Endangered Being Number Two. And it's supposed to show like an elephant and a tiger Together. found a way to merge and better adapt to an environment where they were having problems. The elephant had to get skinnier to move faster and the tiger had to get bigger in order to compete uh, against other things in nature so they could survive. And so it's be, in danger being number two, number one being us, us humans. And uh, 
the last piece, I want, I want to end it on a happy note here. Uh, well, no. This is uh, part of this DEI community was to get involved in marginalized people, the people who feel trapped. And that sometimes by themselves they can get out of the jail that they're in. Or sometimes it's with the help of others, breaking them out. And then when they get out, they have Purple Mountain's majesty, you know, there. And the blue sky and the sun. And, and it's really incumbent upon us to try to help them. Help anyone, not just them, help ourselves who may feel trapped in any way. So anyway, that's, uh, am I on time? Yeah, you're good. Yes. So maybe if there's any questions, I... You have a yes, piece yes. over by that, uh, the old train thing on... Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which one do you see? The, uh... You just tell the railroad that you're on that side, aren't you? Right, I'm on both. Are always putting your posters up? Uh, well, yes, yeah. yes. Uh, that, on that side, I have a metal piece. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's the trans colors. Right. And it's a obelisk. Yeah. Not an obelisk. Yeah. Uh, uh, a Mobius strip. Mobius strip. Right. Mobius strip. It's in the booklet. Yeah. And uh, that piece is probably going up to Peteskill soon. Uh -huh. That, uh, if they accept the stuff I said. So, uh, but anyway, thanks for noticing. And then there on uh, the other side of it are a, a few uh, wood sculptures. What, yeah. what I found is coming out of that experience of just putting these, these branches up against the tree, what I decided to do was connect them simply with wood ties, mm -hmm. not even with rope or anything, just not wood ties, uh, zip ties. Yeah. Zip ties, and, and they're strong. You know, and it holds up. And so I connected, I had three different pieces that that I made a statement about trans, about blessing of trans unicorns, I called it. And it led me into working more with, and I'm looking now to work, I uh, have the Arts Fest in Nourishell and Pelham coming up at the end of this month. At our house. October 20th. And our house is one of the open studios. So please, my address, I think if it's not on there, it's on my website on what I gave out today. Please, uh, please feel free to come. It's both outside and inside. And I'll have other artists there. We'll and music probably, and dance. And probably if, uh, the Nerdy Duo helped me out from here, we'll, have, we'll show some films outside at night. Any other, any other thing, any other, anyone else? Not a question, but I just want to thank you for sharing all of this, you know, like all these stories with us. Thank you. For being vulnerable, because that's not easy to do. And I, I just, like, I, I'm moved by this. So just thank you. Thank so you. Much. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for saying that. Uh, please go to my website if you will. I do have, I do give, I give, I do present a number of plays. Uh, that are on, I think, interesting topics with interesting characters and stuff, and we do that, and uh, uh, and there's other things, you know, poetry and stuff like that too. So thank you all for. I'm so uh, every time I come here, I feel like, oh, but my art, I don't really have the skill like many of the artists who have spent their lifetime doing. But I art, is art is anything. Art is anything. Art doesn't have to be perfect and skilled. And Careful, it's ripping. Be careful of bending.
put out in the way. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.